Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for sticking around and supporting. So today's video is going to be all about the natural hair rules that I don't follow. First, shampooing is highly dreaded in the natural hair community, but guess who shampoos? This girl. If you watch my videos, I shampoo every week. I used to co-wash weekly, but as my hair got longer and I started to really pay attention to it, I started to learn that my hair doesn't really like conditioner as much as I thought it did. It thrives a lot better if I'm styling on a fresh, clean scalp and clean curls. Um, my hair doesn't do well if I just keep packing on products instead of like clarifying it and making sure that my hair is thoroughly ready to accept whatever I'm about to put on it. So I shampoo weekly. So. My hair still looks good, curls are still popping, still full, still growing. The next one that I don't follow. I don't use conditioner. No, 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 no. I do not use conditioner. When I shampoo my hair, I skip the conditioner and I go straight to the deep conditioner. I've tried shampooing and using conditioner and then using deep conditioner and my hair doesn't respond to the deep conditioner as well if it's been conditioned first. If there's a time where I don't have any shampoo, like say if I'm on vacation or I'm at a friend's house, they don't use shampoo, my hair desperately needs to be washed. Of course I will co-wash if they only have conditioner. But if I'm home, I prefer not to use conditioner. My hair just, it just doesn't do it. So cut it. The next rule that I don't follow, I detangle with everything that I have in my closet. I'm not one of those naturals that just finger detangles and everything just melts away and your hair is just like ready for styling. This fro said, girl, no. I have to finger detangle first and then I go in with my white tooth comb and then I go in with my Denman brush. And if you watch my videos and you see this, I need my hair to be thoroughly detangled before I style. My wash and goes are a struggle if my hair is not thoroughly detangled. Twist outs, they're okay, but the ends don't cooperate as well if I don't take the time to really detangle. Like I really need those I don't need close teeth in a comb like a rat tail comb, but I do need the dimming brush that has lots of teeth in it that can try to like catch every tangle or as many tangles as possible. Fourth rule in the natural hair community that I don't follow. When have you seen me protective style? I'll wait. <laughs> Exactly, because I don't. I put on the wig to cover up my flat twist, but I don't do like mini twists or braids or Senegalese or crochet braids or anything like that because the type of hair that you use for those cankalon irritates my scalp really bad. It gets to the point where if it's laying on my ears, my ears will turn red, they will swell up, they will itch, my scalp is itchy, my scalp is inflamed, it's red, it gets tender, and after taking those styles down with that hair, I almost don't want to even style my natural hair because my scalp is just so irritated and it's uncomfortable. It doesn't need to be touched, it just needs to rest. So I avoid that at all costs by just not protective styling. Some people when they buy cankalon hair or cankalon fiber because it's not hair, they will soak it in apple cider vinegar and warm water just to kind of remove all the toxins and the chemicals from it. I want to try that so bad. But my mom is my protective styler and she has already told me that she is not doing my hair anymore because I can't hold those styles for more than a week because of how bad it irritates my scalp. And it's, she's already told me no and I don't want to pay anybody and then have to take it out in a week. So I'm, no. I would, however, really like to get more wigs. Like that would be my protective style. Wigs and weaves that I can just like cover my hair up and just let it rest. Those would be my protective style. But good hair costs money. And I have good hair growing out of my scalp. So I figured I can just wear my own 14 inches of kinky curly. The fifth rule that I don't follow, and this one is not a consistent 
you know, rule breaking. Sometimes when I'm tired, I just don't have the strength and energy to get up and wrap up my hair. There's been times like Saturday where I just, I just crashed. I just crashed in the bed and my hair didn't make it into the scarf. But I do make up for it the next morning. I properly hydrate it with my spray bottle. I take a creamy moisturizer, usually True by Me Beautiful's hydrating hair butter, and I will scrunch that into my hair. And then I'll take coconut oil because I re upped. I take my coconut oil and I scrunch that into my hair as well. Take some Jamaican black castor oil and put it in my scalp. Um, put it in a pineapple with my silk wrap and I cover it with a plastic cap. That plastic cap kind of like creates a greenhouse effect, you can sort of say. And if you get in the shower with that and the steam in the bathroom gets real, you can see that the moisture is starting to build up inside of it. I do make up for it. If I fall asleep without my scarf, I do try to wake up in the morning, hydrate my hair, moisturize it, you know, just try to repair the damage that I probably have caused. And so far, I don't really get too much negative effects from it. I get the regular split ends and breakage from like not trimming as often as I probably should. And I don't know if it's coming from, you know, me sleeping without a scarf but I don't think it could be that because I don't do that often literally probably like once a month I fall asleep without my scarf okay the sixth rule that I don't follow I shampoo every week but I don't pre poo I don't understand it I I don't I tried pre pooing before where I took a glob of coconut oil sectioned my hair off and co coated my hair in that coconut oil and then co-washed I probably should have can shampooed after it but I didn't like it I'd rather just shampoo and then do my oil rinse after the shampooing is done the point of me using shampoo is to clear the buildup and I feel like when I put the oil on my hair it's kind of like creating more buildup and making the shampoo work even harder and I don't want my hair to be stripped I just want my scalp to be clean so I take my shampoos and very carefully, I try to read up on them or watch enough people use them. I buy them from Sally's so that just in case they don't work, I can take it back. And I just try to take care of my hair as much as possible. I always follow up with a deep conditioner after the shampoo. So just in case the shampoo is stripping my hair a little bit, but I'm not feeling it, I'm putting that moisture back into my hair after I, you know, with the deep conditioner after I shampoo. I try to fix it. All of the rules that I don't follow, I kind of have a mechanism behind it to repair anything that could have been broken since I'm not following those rules. Another natural hair rule that I don't follow is I trim my own hair. I haven't had a, prof a professional trim since like 11th grade when I was still going to the salon. But since then, even when I big chopped, my great friend Kwa, she cut my hair. She used to keep up with it when we were in school. When I graduated and she stayed in Philly and I came back to DC, I had to learn how to do it myself. And it's really simple how I trim my hair. I can, you know, make a video of it, but I just do it usually when my hair is like this or a fresh wash and go. And I take the ends that look a little weird. So like this right here. This would be gone. I would trim like right here or right here because I don't want, I feel like if your curls are not acting right, it could be a combination of a bunch of things. One, you could just have multiple textures like me, which is why I have to take pieces of hair like that and really examine them before I trim them off. So you could have multiple textures. If you have multiple textures, you wanna really be careful trimming by yourself. Two, if your ends are really weird or just not cooperating it may just be time for them to go don't hold on to dead ends they can be split they can break off split ends can travel up the hair shaft i've seen it happen to me if i see like a split end at work i will go home and try to like all right it was up here somewhere let's find it oh bam trim that off and i trim with hair shears you don't want to ever trim with like arts and crafts scissors or desk scissors or kitchen scissors or any other type of scissor you want to use hair shears and when you get those hair shears you don't want to use them on anything else except your hair if you don't trust yourself trimming your own hair please don't do it it took me a long time to really understand like what is a what a problem section looks like in my hair and when to trim it off summer 2012 i called myself giving my giving me my own trim or my own big chop and I ended up with a lopsided mess I 
couldn't even wear any bantu knots or anything. I just had to straighten my hair all the time, which is why I developed heat damage again and had to transition for the second time. So don't trim it if you don't feel confident in your abilities. The best way that I can tell you to trim is either by doing like a twist out with small to medium sized twist or a wash and go and just trimming literally those ends that look crazy those ends that don't coil up with the rest those ends that are straggly those ends that are uneven trim those off that was a really quick video i just wanted to come on and put that information out there because i know i have a lot of new naturals that ask me for advice, follow me on all of the social media platforms and also look for these videos to help them adapt to this new natural hair lifestyle. When I went natural first back in 2011, I really felt like I needed to stick to the rules. I needed to only condition, only co-wash. I rarely deep conditioned because my hair still didn't like that whole conditioner and then deep conditioner thing, but I tried to do it as much as possible. I stuck with you know, products that didn't have any sulfates, parabens, silicones, and I still do those things. I still don't use products that have sulfates, parabens, and silicones in them. I did that whole hydration, spraying my hair and covering it with a shower cap every night. I also did protein treatments often, but I followed all those rules. I did the protein treatments. I tried to keep my hair in tip top shape all the time but if you think about it if you manipulate your hair so much to that extent it can do more harm than good so you really have to just pay attention to how your hair reacts to certain things if your hair is clumping up effortlessly with co-washing or co-washing and deep conditioning by all means keep going if your hair is thriving off of protein treatments keep going if can if shampoos strip your hair no matter what brand of shampoo you've tried don't use it listen to your hair break the rules that your hair does not comply with you want to listen to your hair and that's the best advice that i can give you it's great to watch youtubers and get advice but that's all that it should be it should just be advice it should not be some book of natural hair virtues that you feel like you have to read before you even take a chance on anything so i hope this video was really informative to you and if you have any questions about how I still get my hair to grow and look great while you know breaking these rules, leave them in the comment section and I will communicate back with you. I try to be as social as possible. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time.